If I ran a wrestling promotion, and I totally did for a bit, remember, I reckon I would probably use my supreme authority to ensure that I never got embarrassed on television, intentionally or otherwise. Some promoters haven't been as astute or lucky, whether it was on their own television show or after their promoting days were done and they had to answer to somebody else. Somebody like, say, an evil billionaire who gets his kicks out of degrading his employees when he's not busy booking himself to do or suffer something demeaning, that is. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 times wrestling promoters embarrass themselves on TV. Join us. Number 10, Eric Bischoff's Beer Blast. Wrestling fans of a certain distinction, that's a polite way of saying age by the way, will always look back fondly on the wild and woolly days of the Monday Night Wars. While some aspects of the head-to-head -head competition between WWE and WCW have been embellished just a tad, one thing that is very true about that era is that the fans in the arena were a lot rowdier than they are today. WCW punters seem to have a thing for throwing stuff towards the heels, and that included Executive Vice President Eric Bischoff, who joined the hated New World Order in November of 1996. On an episode of Nitro weeks later, one fan got the Bish dead on with a nice creamy pint as he was walking down the entrance ramp. Seconds later, another fan from the other side managed to nail him with toilet roll. Those two fans were probably one of the best tag teams WCW had at the time, to be honest. The camera actually cut away when when the beer hits, but WCW showed the whole thing uncut a week later. Two years later, Bischoff was doing his insufferable talk show bit to build his match with Jay Leno when some absolute legend took matters into their own hands and doused him with some of that liquid gold. Number 9. Paul Heyman Taste the Quiche At one point, it was pretty much a rite of passage in WWE to let a big Samoan bloke rub his fat old booty in your face. It happened to the male wrestlers, the so-called divas, referees, authority figures, and just about everyone else. Nobody was spared, and that included former promoters. When Brock Lesnar took on Rikishi on the August 15th, 2002 edition of SmackDown, the next big thing found himself in an unfortunate position. Sitting down with his head against the turnbuckles, Brock was about to get a face full of man butts when his manager Paul Heyman ran in to prevent it from going down. As a consequence, the former ECW promoter quickly found himself staring at the largest cheeks in the WWE locker room. His audible screams didn't prevent the inevitable, and Heyman became the latest unfortunate victim of the stink face. And to think that Heyman, as poorly dangerously, once managed Rikishi as Fatu during his Samoan SWAT team days. You know, I wonder if Paul and Jimmy Uso ever sit around and wax nostalgic about the time Jimmy's dad turned the so-called special counsel into a literal brown noser. Number 8. Dixie Begs Hulk he may have been older, more broken down, and quite possibly clinically insane, but Hulk Hogan was a big get for TNA in 2009. Now say what you will about the Hulkster, and bear in mind I've just noted how he was old, broken down, and quite possibly clinically insane, but the man was an icon of the industry, an instantly recognizable figure who had the potential to open many doors for Dixie Carter's promotion, and Dixie certainly didn't want the WWE Hall of Famer to go. In fact, she wanted the two of them to become business partners, or at least that's what she proposed on the October 3rd, 2013 episode of Impact. Hogan decided that didn't quite work for him, brother, and upped and quit instead. In order to try and stop him, Carter literally begged Hulk to stay, going so far as to latch onto his leg like a child having a tantrum. While it was speculated that Hogan played his creative control card to get this kind of flattering televised send-off, it was actually Eric Bischoff's idea to have Dixie look like a mad such-and-such -such under the pretense of giving giving her some extra heat. Hmm. Number 7. Herb Abrams bows out with the Blackjack Brawl Herb Abrams was one of the craziest wrestling promoters of all time, and his promotion, the Universal Wrestling Federation, was very much that of one run by a crazy person. The UWF was in existence, somehow, for close to 40 shows, 40 shows which often more closely resembled cocaine-addled fever dreams than your typical wrestling cards. After several years of dodgy inside and outside of the ring exploits, Herb threw one last roll of the dice with the ill-fated Blackjack Brawl, a television special he believed would breathe new life into an endeavor most had assume had long since died. A very clearly under the influence Abrams himself would be the host of the show, leading to many erratic on-camera moments like his bizarre controversial interview with Little Tokyo, and trying to get the last word in by holding the UWF World Heavyweight title belt in the air to absolutely no reaction whatsoever. 
A constant, jittery presence, Herb showed the world, well, the 15 or so people who bothered to watch the show, that he was not only clueless when it came to running and producing a televised wrestling show, but that he tended to show up to work higher than a giraffe's backside. Number 6. Jim Cornette's Response to 9 11 after a tragic, traumatizing event like the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks on New York City, people are going to react in different ways, and really, it's hard to criticize some reactions when tensions and emotions are running so high. However, the way Jim Cornette publicly responded to 9-11 on the first OVW television show after the tragedy was downright appalling and made the former Smoky Mountain wrestling promoter look like a fool. Opening the show, Cornette assembled the rest of the OVW roster and crew and spoke directly directly to the hard cam. For about three minutes, an increasingly animated Cornette made the case for the United States military going to the Middle East and committing war crimes in retaliation for the attacks, arguing that innocent civilian lives in another part of the world should not be spared because two wrongs apparently do make a right. It was certainly a peculiar way to open a pro wrestling show, a genre which is typically viewed as, you know, escapist entertainment, and made a supposed wrestling genius come across like a raving warmonger. Good thing he's so much mellower these days, isn't it? Number 5. Tony Khan Fears for His Life Alright, so I want to preface this by saying that I think Tony Khan seems like a generally pretty sound guy and what happened to him backstage at All In was not something anyone should have to encounter in the workplace. Whew, glad I got that out of the way. My mate Phil, sorry that's too obvious, my mate P. Brooks told me TK has some rather ruthless lawyers. All jokes aside, Tony's big night, 80 or so thousand people in Wembley Stadium for AEW's biggest show ever, remember, was almost ruined by an angry Pepsi enthusiast supposedly running amok and threatening to get physical with the billionaire. And while Khan might have been scared in the moment, and justifiably so, him going on TV hours after the news of CM Punk's departure broke and claiming that he had feared for his life during the incident sent more than a few eyes rolling. Was it special phrasing his counsel suggested he use? Did he genuinely think the one-time UFC fighter was going to trap him in a shoot anaconda vice? I really don't know, but Tony Khan's public address was a moment of embarrassment in the rolling eyes of some. Number 4. Dixie Carter addresses the TNA roster. Look, we've all had to attend one of those boring company-wide staff meetings where your boss or bosses talk a load of absolute bollocks for an eternity while you sit there bored out of your skull and contemplate the decisions that you made in life that led up to you finding yourself in this very position. Yeah, we've all sat through them, but TNA had the audacity to not only film one, but then air it on their TV show too. The November 5th, 2009 edition of Impact began with Dixie Carter addressing the TNA roster prior to a television taping. With Dixie stood at ringside and the wrestlers and crew sitting in various parts of the Impact Zone, she proceeded to sternly warn them that big changes were on the horizon and that they could either stand behind her or step aside. Basically, the gist was, if you questioned anything happening in TNA, you were questioning Dixie directly and she would not allow that to happen. This was a legit talent meeting, by the way, and none of the remarks were scripted for Carter. It was not only cringe-inducing TV, but it must have been quite the morale booster for everyone giving their absolute all to make TNA better. Number 3. Eric Bischoff Pays For His Past Sins As we saw a little earlier, Eric Bischoff was handed his share of unscripted drinks-based embarrassment when he was EVP of WCW. Well, when hell froze over and Easy e joined WWE strictly as an on-screen screen talent, he was handed more than his fair share of scripted humiliation. Like Heyman, Bischoff too was given an up-and-close personal view of Rikishi's black hole, something he was naturally hesitant to go through with. He was also routinely humbled during his co-general manager storyline with Steve Austin, especially at Bad Blood 2003, where he was given a Bronco Buster by Mae Young, who had stuffed sardines in her knickers for added unpleasantness, before getting launched into a poop-filled pig pen by Stone Cold. Something tells me Vince McMahon enjoyed seeing his former enemy squirm because he, or his creative henchman, consistently wrote scenarios where Bischoff got egg on his face. Or, if not egg, another man's bum. Honestly, I swear that company had an obsession with blokes' asses because even when he came back for a one-off in 2006, Eric's night somehow ended with Degeneration X forcing him to examine Big Dick Johnson's poop shoots. Serves you right for 83 weeks, mate. Number 2. Stephanie McMahon Takes a Mud Bath Stephanie McMahon may not have been a promoter per se, but as a member of the McMahon family, she typically had an important role, if not several roles, when it came to WWE business. The Billion Dollar Princess was, of course, also a featured television character who, more often than not, played a heel. 
And part of being a heel is getting embarrassed by the baby faces, as Steph was by Chris Jericho, Rikishi, him again, and even her own husband, Triple H. Hit in the face with pies, being cut down with demeaning one-liners, having her clothes ripped off, Steph suffered it all and usually sold it convincingly, giving fans a satisfying payoff. The payoffs got more satisfying the longer she was in an on-screen role, which happened to coincide with her looking less and less vulnerable. On the June 23rd, 2014 episode of Raw, Vicky Guerrero was tossed in a pool of mud by Vince's daughter, kayfabe costing Vicky her job. With Steph giving her the na 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 nas, Guerrero decided she had nothing left to lose and gave as good as she got, sending WWE's chief brand officer into the pool. Number one, Vince McMahon. Yep, that's the entry title just Vince McMahon. And that's because WWE's one-time leader could have his own 20, maybe even 30-point list when it comes to times he's embarrassed himself on TV. Whether it was on his own shows as part of the entertainment or when he was caught off guard in the quote-unquote real world. The genetic jackhammer has peed his pants, had his head shoved up another man's anus twice, accidentally tore both his quads angrily getting into the ring, had his head shaved by Donald Trump. Honestly, we could go on and on and on. And then there were the instances of Vince making a tit out of himself away from his own cameras, such as when he got his feathers ruffled by Bob Costas during an appearance on On The Record, or when he tried to smack the papers out of a reporter's hand when he was being probed for an episode of HBO Real Sports about premature deaths in pro wrestling. Vince McMahon is, was, and always has been a total enigma. With him, you often get the sublime mixed with the very unfortunate, and that often leads to him embarrassing himself. Whether he actually realizes it or not is a different matter entirely.